strategist and former judge, and Antoine Seawright, Democratic strategist and CEO of Blueprint Strategy. Ken, first to you. Why not just uh, have have uh, whatever Mueller gives Barr, have Barr turn it over to Congress and let them do what they want? I don't have any problem whatsoever with transparency. I don't have any problem whatsoever with the Mueller report being presented to the entire public all at once. I think the only time that we don't want to present it to the entire public, and maybe not to everybody in Congress, is if there's certain matters of national security that may be revealed through it. Remember, the entire argument that the Democrats have been making is that there's some kind of illegal Russian collusion going on. Strike that. They're just saying there's collusion going on because they don't understand that you need unlawful acts to go with collusion right, in order to make it a crime. Collusion, there's a conspiracy to exactly. defraud the United States. But Antoine, to, to um, Ken's point, um, you don't have a problem, right, with, uh, with Barr releasing everything with the exception of perhaps secret grand jury material or things that may be classified that could harm national security. It's so funny hearing Republicans talking about risking national security when this president has been very reckless to Republicans in Congress just last year after they were warned about releasing certain documents and they brought them to, to the public's light because it was a national security issue. So it's so funny and hypocritical to see Republicans talking about uh, national security risk. I also think it's convenient that they will not vote for this measure. It seems as if they want to play hide and go seek. They want to hide this and seek uh, some sort of answer on how to deal with whatever complication may come as a result of the Mueller investigation and report. At the end of the day, this has sucked most of the oxygen out of America's room uh, over the past year or so. And I think the American people deserve to hear what happened, how can we fix going to happen well forward, and what implications or how this rubs up against the president, or even if it bites him in some way, shape, or form. Well, I think we just did hear, did hear from Ken Del Vecchio that he would support turning it over, so maybe other Republicans will follow suit. But uh, speaking of hypocrisy, Antoine, i got to ask you, because House Speaker Pelosi today told the Washington Post that the House should only vote to impeach if there's bipartisan support and a good chance that the Democrats could get two-thirds of the Senate to go along with impeachment. Um, I thought Democrats stood for some sort of principle like the rule of law and not for a political expediency. I don't think there, first of all, the media has given this tone and this megaphone to this idea of Democrats want to impeach. I know Speaker Pelosi, Leader Hoyer, and Mr. Clyburn, uh, the leadership in the House has been very consistent about not wanting to impeach. At the end of the day, impeachment is very taxing on the country. And instead of focusing on impeachment, in which we know it will not pass the Senate, uh, instead, House Democrats are really focused on things that but the American people But that's the thing, Antoine, want. that's that's politics. And Ken Delvecchio, I remember Republicans, they were going up against Bill Clinton 20 years ago at a nearly 60 percent approval rating. They knew they couldn't get two-thirds in the Senate, but the Republicans put principle forward and said, look, if somebody committed perjury, we're going to impeach him in the House. Yeah, look, there's massive hypocrisy on both sides here. I never thought that Bill Clinton should be impeached. I don't think that Donald Trump should be impeached, obviously. I don't think he's committed any crime whatsoever. I find it a, a little hypocritical for Antoine to say that Republicans are being hypocritical. Look at right now, Democrats, liberals, and mass don't care about civil rights anymore in, in the form of people's constitutional rights to innocent until proven guilty. They used to be the champions of it. I think the most major point we should make me? here, hold on one second. I think the most major point we should make here is that everybody's got to calm down with using criminal laws and twisting ambiguous statutes around alleged facts and prosecuting people because it's a big circular effect where everybody's after each other. I agree, and I think we should all wait to see what the Mueller report does, but shouldn't Nancy Pelosi also wait? And if the Mueller report comes back and says there's clear and convincing evidence that the president either committed perjury or obstructed justice, the House ought to impeach him. I'll make a blanket statement because I don't think Donald Trump is guilty of anything, but if any political leader no matter what position they are, president or otherwise, if they've committed crimes, they need to be treated equally under the law. Otherwise, it sends a terrible message. But I think the most important message is calm down in using criminal laws because at this stage, you've got good law enforcement agencies looking at bad law enforcement agencies, which has been going on forever, not agencies, but people within them. And they are constantly watching each other. It's gotten to the point we have attorney generals of the United States getting called in front of Congress. 
you know, the Democrats are going to hurt themselves, the Republicans are going to hurt themselves because they keep trying to bite each other with criminal laws. But Antoine, won't the country be hurt if, in fact, Democrats do see evidence of perjury and obstruction of justice and make a political calculation to decide, ah, oh, now because we can't get a conviction in the Senate, forget about it. Doesn't that send a message to any future president? Look, all you have to do is make sure you control at least one of the chambers and you can get away with whatever you want. No, I don't. I don't agree with that concept. I think that the Congress, the Democratic Congress, would then have a responsibility, an obligation to the people who put them in the majority, um, to operate uh, with uh, trust. Um, to uh, to start the impeachment process and then put it on the feet of Republicans who not want to operate as the oversight branch in which the legislative branch should to the executive branch. And so I think if I don't there's understand clear what you don't agree with, Antoine. I'm sorry to interrupt you, but it's a pretty simple concept. If somebody's violated the law, no matter who they are, then they should be brought to justice. And Congress is so only why, so, so first, first of all, only first of all I, I, is for I, I let, impeachment. Okay, they stop, can't, stop, they slow, can't slow, slow down. Slow down. Slow, dude. Dude, slow down. You, you, you ramble for right, five dude. minutes. I'll let you talk. Let me finish my thought. Um, at the end of the day, I think Congress would then have an obligation uh, to start the impeachment process and let it lay on the feet of Republicans and let it lay on their hands. They did, they did not want to hold this president accountable regardless of party. I think the American people deserve that. All right, I think we are in agreement with Kendall Vecchio, and that is if there is proof, if there's evidence that the president, any president, committed perjury, obstruction of justice, or any other crime, the House will impeach, and then the Senate will determine through a trial, if they can get two-thirds, whether or not the president should be removed from office. But the idea that the House would somehow not do something because they're afraid of what the Senate would do, I think that's a little bit, uh, a little bit strange. But Kendall Vecchio and Antoine Seawright, good to have you both. Thank you. Absolutely. In Thank focus, you. a frightening political...